What's going on, YouTube? Uh, Ziploc Gory back here again, and I am here with my brothers at arms. You guys know us as the YouTubers 3, and uh, today we're going to be talking about a different subject. We talked about movies and video game movies and you know what makes a great villain and what makes a great hero. Now we're going to be talking about another one of my favorite hobbies and uh, my brother's favorite hobbies as well. Uh, video games. We're going to be talking about the whole shebang, you know, the characters and how the medium has evolved and different things of that nature. So, um, for me, video games have been a really fun thing. You know, I remember my first system being a Super Nintendo, and uh, the first game I played is funny enough was um, Jurassic Park. <laughs> And that was the first game I had, and then I got Mario on there, uh, RPG. And, you know, it was just a fun experience, and ever since then, I was just really hooked. The video games had me hooked like no other um, medium really could, because unlike movies and comics and TV shows, video games are interactive, and they can keep you hooked for hours and and things of that nature. So, um Whoever would like to step in and talk about, you know, your first experience with, you know, video games, they can go in. Um, so, take it away. Whoever wants to start. Okay, I'll start. Um, okay. Well, since uh, <laughs> which all of us, um, a lot of the our fellow YouTubers and viewers know, like, out of the three of us, they know I'm the oldest. <laughs> So they start to call me an old man, but um, I'll take it back even further, guys. With me, uh, my first system in terms of video games was the first Sega Master System. Real old school, guys. Old school. Uh, and then from there came the regular NES, and from there <laughs> came the Sega Genesis, and from there... I continued with Sega, pretty much. I stayed loyal to Sega. Had the Sega Saturn, had the Dreamcast. Still have my Dreamcast, guys. Uh, but with me, video games have always been, uh, like I've always said about comics, they take you to another world. And one thing I don't think a lot of people will deny is that video games sometimes can be good stress relievers. They do relieve a lot of stress. And... Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I will say that, for example, but like I said, with, with me, you know, I've, if there's a system that have came out in the past, guys, I've probably had it, you know, I've probably had it. And there's sometimes I regret that I've sold the system or not. Cause sometimes you start missing sometimes the classic stuff. The, there are a lot of classic games out there, guys, that still hold the test of time with a lot of these new games that are coming out. You know, for me, a game that really holds dear to me is a lot of those side scroll beat em up games like Streets of Rage and Final Fight and uh, the the old Ninja Turtle games and <laughs> there's just so many those side scroll beat em up games that I, I loved when I was younger and still love to this day. So I'm glad to see when uh, Microsoft. Uh, you know, or PlayStation Network, they bring back these classic games. Like, they recently had brought back uh, the classic X-Men game that uh, was, which I loved playing. And so they, they really take you someplace, and they really help me kind of relax sometimes, because there are times when I'm having a bad day, and I'll, I'll pop in a game, and, I'll, you know, I start to relax again. And I'm like, okay. So, but they have really evolved, you know, mm -hmm. from... From the production to the, you know, like I said before, guys, you know, they get, they're now getting these 
world academy award winning composers to do music a lot of these known rock bands like you know uh breaking benjamin errol smith you know uh disturbed people like that are making exclusive music for these games you know a, a lot of these artists now so you know let's not forget actors now. yeah and yeah yeah take it away zip yeah go ahead t uh, what, was, what was your uh, first experience and as a you know playing games or whatnot uh for me it was i don't know if you guys ever played this game back in the 90s but uh primal fury yeah mm-hmm. um for those who don't know that was like a mortal Kombat game with giant dinosaurs and giant gorillas uh it was my first ex- video game experience because i just loved i was i was still a kid and loved w- w- um, watching godzilla movies as a kid so having a video game where you could play as a giant dinosaur or, or giant gorilla and beat the crap out of some other monster or just pee on him and kill him, uh, <laughs> uh, it was a fun experience. And I moved on from there uh, to other other games. Like uh, P- I remember having PS uh, PS1 for the longest time. And I got to say, though, the game, some of the games, it look you got to look at it like, it's an evolution. Like at some points, it's ev- the gameplay evolves, but there's still the same stories there at some points. Uh, so that's my thing. I feel like the ga- the games have evolved, but the story hasn't. That's my thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And for me, I've often said that video games are very. I mean, I've always I always said this that video games are becoming more like movies, and you know, vice versa. But Video games have always had some pretty good stories, and like I said, they keep you hooked. And now we're gonna get into how they really have evolved. You know, for me, um, I remember when the PlayStation came out, and they brought back Metal Gear, and that got really popular. And you know, they they had you know stuff like Crash Bandicoot, and I'm talking about the PlayStation One, that that PS2 and PS3 and all that yet, but. When that came out, that got really huge because, you know, video games were popular, but not as popular as they are now. I mean, they're really huge. And for me, when the PlayStation came out, you know, that's when I want to say the next gen really took off because they had the disc. You know, for a long while, we had the cartridge. And I remember I used to have to blow the cartridge. (laughs) It didn't work. And, you know, and. You know, they had the chip inside there, and yeah. games were really, you know, uh, becoming something really special. And for me, the PlayStation is where it really all began to really uh, take off. Uh, what do you guys thoughts on this? Uh, we'll start with you this time, uh, Chris. Um, for, I, I would definitely agree. Like I said, uh, for those that don't know, when the PS1 came out, you know, Dreamcast wasn't really selling as well as Sega thought it would. And yeah, that 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 uh, system did have the disc as well. But I will always say Dreamcast had pretty much. I mean, uh, the Sega Saturn, excuse me, had some of the best fighting games on that system. Like, you know, X Men vs. Street Fighter, things like that, way before it came to the PS One. But yeah, when the PS One came out, you know, we were getting games like you said, Metal Gear came back, and that came back hard. To the point where that story was like unbelievable. It was just like the character development through every character in there. Not just Solid Snake, but Meryl and Revolver Ozelot and Psycho Mantis and Sniper Sniper Wolf. You know, all those great characters. Vulcan Raven. You know, but then of course, I think a lot of people, to all my RPG fans out there, jumped on with Final Fantasy VII. That put everybody back into the Final Fantasy world. But yeah, PS1 really strived into bringing and deliver. Like I said, besides those games, you know, I was loving Twisted Metal, you know. I, mm-hmm. I you know, I, and I'm glad to see that's coming back, you know. Uh, like you said, Crash Bandicoot was there. That's where Tomb Raider got big, you know, off of yeah. that, you know. Uh, there were just so many good games on the PS1 that you, you look at and you're like, it takes you back. It really does take you back. You, you can even put uh, Soul Reaver and Le- Legacy of Cain up in there. Oh, yeah, that was those, good. Those were good games back then, you know. And, you know, hopefully, and if 
Nicholas Stings, I know you're watching, bro. I'm, I'm hoping you're watching. Yeah, I know those are two games you would want to be brought back. Uh, Legends of Sea of Cain and uh, Soul Reaver. So, yeah, those, it's, it's P- PS1 really strive to deliver. Okay. Y- your thoughts on that, T? Uh, I think pretty much Chris said said uh, what I was going to say for me. So oh Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's okay. cool. I'm just saying he just... I think he, he pretty much covered everything right there. Okay. Now, with the passing of E3 this uh, following weekend, um, if anybody, you know, I'm pretty sure everybody has seen it by now. And, you know, we're seeing how they're coming up with these new devices and whatnot. But, you know, really, like I said, with the PS1, we started to get a lot of fan favorites for characters. I mean, characters like Mario, Link, and Sonic, they were popular. You know, you had that. But then... Also, you know, Nintendo came out with Smash Brothers, and that was really big, you know. Um, that was, like, their first kind of, like, beat em up like, fighter game, if you want to uh, put it that way, you know, because they had different characters from other places, you know, Mario, and they even had Pokemon characters in there, which I thought was really interesting. And, you know, uh, how do you, what do you guys think about that? We'll start with you this time, um, T. Uh, about Smash Brothers in general, or... Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I enjoyed Smash Brothers. I thought it was good. I mean, I never played a lot of the in- Nintendo ca- characters other than Pokemon and uh, Mario, and you know, some Link and maybe a- one game of Metroid. But yeah, it was fun. I mean, it was totally different than what you would see in a normal Nintendo game. And it was cool to see all their other characters, and you know, they could really uh, expo- have more exposure for their other lesser-known characters. And I thought that was a very cool idea on Nintendo's part. Mm-hmm. But one problem though, I miss Mewtwo in the game. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you think you was gonna? Did you think you was gonna get past a video game without having Hulkley ninety three? Hulkley ninety three makes his his interest, folks. He is here and he's always welcome. I might not be here for a very long time, but I heard Super Smash Bros. And since that's one of my favorite Nintendo games of all time, let's say that Super Smash Bros. changed a whole lot for Nintendo. Mm-hmm. It was never to be thought of. I remember the first commercial showing Mario, Donkey Kong, and Pikachu, and all of them looked like they're having a great time, only for them to start beating the hell out of each other. And I'm first thinking, what is this? And Super Smash Bros. And ever since then, it's been Nintendo's money maker. It, oh yeah. It even being Mario games alone. So take that, Mario. <laughs> well, you can't really blame him because it's, it's still got Mario in it, so I don't think that's a win situation right there. And and it spawned off very well because in Brawl, they did a lot. They brought Sonic, Snake. At one point, they was even going to bring Mega Man. So Nintendo was really, and I kind of got to um, like that about Nintendo for the, what they were going to do with Brawl. They was actually going to expand and reach out with others. They wasn't just going to say this is a whole Nintendo game. So I hope in the next one they bring back Sonic, Snake, and Mega Man if they do. Even they won't even think about bringing Ryu in, but I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was my brother, Hulkling 93. <laughs> and and uh, now we're really getting into uh, characters. We're really going to get into, you know, pop characters that started to get really, really popular. And with video games... I have to say, out of all the stuff I'm into, video games, you know, video game fans are really, really passionate about the characters. I mean, you know, starting with stuff like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, I, I mean, that was a big rivalry back in the day, you know. What's, what, what's better, Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat? It was pretty much building up to the point where, you know, we were getting um, forms and things like that because, you know, growing up, we I didn't have a computer, and when they started doing you know, video game forums and stuff like that for different games and companies, I started to really, really get passionate about characters I liked. And um, what are some characters you guys really, really started to like uh, as, you know, video games started to evolve? Um, Start with T on this one. Okay, go ahead, T. Uh, Sonic, no question on that. I like Sonic more than Mario. (laughs) Uh. Uh, who else is there? Uh, at, at For a short time, Master Chief. Well, actually, not Master Chief, the Arbiter from Halo. Mm-hmm. 
uh, I've kind of fallen out with Halo, and I get I, um, well. I guess we'll get the Halo Four in a in a while. <laughs> but yeah. uh, who else is there? Uh, Star Fox. Uh, uh, McCloud. Yeah. Uh, who else is there? There was. I um, feel like I'm missing somebody. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, uh, a majority of the Mortal Kombat characters, the and even like as as far as it goes, even when Pokemon came out, Mewtwo. I, that's still my favorite Pokemon, even though I don't like the series anymore. <laughs> what about you, Chris? Uh, with me, Jesus. <laughs> uh, well, I definitely agree. Of course, everybody should know Link is up there. So you know, Link was always somebody I cared about, and just seeing him evolve. Uh, of course, many of the Street Fighter characters, Mortal Kombat characters, of course, Scorpion and Sub Zero, like the two guys I really attach to the most. Uh, Sonic, yeah, I I love Sonic. I I still do this day. I still think they need to do justice to Sonic. Um, uh, Strider, hear you. Uh, Capcom's resident ninja uh, was always cool to me. I'm 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 praying that Capcom makes another Strider game. Uh, uh, Ryu Hayabusa, you know, uh, uh, just there's so many characters. I uh, Snake and people like that. You know, they, they've all were characters that I liked. And, of course, I can't leave out the one, the only, Dante. You know, everybody knows Dante is just is just one of the coolest characters. Uh, you know, so, yeah, I there are so many V that I could talk about, but I'm not going to go all into it. But, yeah, there was there was a lot that I can say, but those are a couple. Yeah, um, I, I'm going to also get back on the thing with Sonic because with me, Anything that moved fast, I was definitely into. And Sonic was that guy. And he was so popular, not just as a video game icon, but, you know, they had him with cartoons and, you know, things of that nature. So even if you weren't playing the games, you knew who Sonic was. Um, And that's just one of the many characters that uh, we uh, started to get into as games started to evolve. And like I said, people were very, very passionate about this, uh, especially the crossover. I remember... SNK versus Capcom started coming out, and, you know, that's why video games um, were just, you know, they reminded me of comic books in the 90s where, you know, you have all these different crossovers, and they were really buddy-buddy, and video games are great for that, um, and it was good for competition, and video games are also a great way to meet friends, you know, they bring a lot of people together, and, um, you know, we can have friendly competitions, and sometimes it can get out of hand. Now, let's talk about the arcade scene because nowadays the arcade scene is not really big because we have online. And going to the arcade was really fun. You know, like I said, getting back on the point of meeting new people, you got to challenge uh, other people to fight and whatnot. And I remember being in arcade all the time, you know, that, that was just, you know, that was just a great hangout to keep, you know, people out of trouble and things like that. So... Uh, what did you guys think about the arcade scene? You know, um, too bad now that they're only they're still big in Japan, but mm-hmm. for me the arcades were good. My father would take me to a place uh, called Nathan's here in New York, and they had a huge, huge arcade that you know you could go there and play. And I'm talking about Nathan's, the the famous hot dog place, uh, guys, <laughs> and um, it was really big there. Like they would have like the the, sh- the games where you get in the cars. One of my favorite arcade games was Afterburner, uh, where you it was like a flight simulation game, and you get in there in the cockpit, and the thing would move around, and you you flip around, you do a turn, and it would turn. You know, uh, Moto GT GPT was great. You know, get on the motorcycle and control it. Crazy Taxi, gotta <laughs> love Crazy Taxi. Uh, yeah. Get in there, yeah. you know. Besides just the fighting games, yeah, it was a lot of the interactive stuff that I really enjoyed from the arcades, you know, from holding the guns, playing like the the old Alien vs Predator games or the old Terminator 2 games where you hold the the can the gun, and you know, it, it was it was always fun because usually the the system was really big, so like four people can play with you, and that was always cool to meet new people and new friends there. You know, 
But of course, you know, it, 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 and if you can find these games now, you know, most of the time you still find stuff like that in movie theaters. They'll still have a little bit of games there. And it's always, it always brings a little nostalgic and give, put a smile on the face to see that there's still these arcade system games out there. You know, I think one of them that really got big is the, like those Dance Dance Revolution games. <laughs> you see people tapping and dancing on the, you know, hit this and things like that. But it was really big, you know, back then. Back in the 90s, they were, they were huge, you know. But then, like you said, when online got bigger, the home entertainment video games got bigger they evolved then yet it was like you know why why bring it why bring this game to just the arcade and then finally they'll come on the home console then we could just bring it on the home console and that was it so yeah it but they were big they were really big okay uh you got anything to say about that t yeah i i was actually young when the arcade scene was huge uh there's actually um, where I'm staying at right now for a short time. Uh, there's actually an arcade in the sm- in the mall here, but it sucks. I'm not gonna lie, it it sucks. Uh, the arcade scene was a really cool place. Like you said, it kept people out of trouble. The you know good place to meet other people. But now it's just like, hey, you want to kill 15 minutes? Okay, let's hit the arcade. Yeah. There's, there's no love for that if the if for that anymore. I mean. It's it's kind of sad, but at the same time, on the other hand, it's not like you can just you know t- take a car and drive just for the sake of you know spending more money than playing a game when you can sit at home and have the online experience. Yeah, yeah, because like like Chris said, in Japan, it's still big. I mean, they still have competitions, you know, when they get together and they go to their uh, football stadiums and whatnot, and it's really huge. It's a really big event, and you know, it is sad to see the arcade scene gone here because now, like I said, everything is online. And, you know, online, you know, there's kind of a danger and a bad side to that because you meet, you know, sometimes you come across some real assholes, especially on stuff like Xbox Live. And, you know, mm-hmm. if you're, you know, if you ever played, of course, the, the famous game Halo, which, you know, I'm not really a big fan of, but... You know, you know, people really get into it and they start calling each other names and stuff like that. It's just like it's taking they taking the fun out of it and it becomes so serious and it's like, you know, I just miss the arcade scene. Yeah. And um, you know, you got something to say? Uh, yeah, about Halo. Uh, that's what turned me off to Halo was online play. I just, you know, I could not take it. It's like a jihad, really. The Halo, for the most part, there are some good Halo. Uh, gamers out there, but they're, for the most part, it's taken to a whole new level. And Halo, in general, is that not that much of a game. I mean, like, it's... I could compare it to Doom, like an upgraded version of Doom. And, you know, the it, it, it's not that big. I mean, why... I understand that, that it had a great story, and, you know, it had interesting weaponry, but Halo, in general, I, I used to be a Halo fan, and now... It's become a it's it's become a franchise that I do not want to be a part of. However, I'll still I still love the mythos and you know read the comics and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And speaking of comic books, I remember when the first Spider-Man game came out for the PS One, and I was hooked on that. I mean, you know, we all here are fans of comic books, and seeing heroes come to the video game system was also fun. You know, you got to play. As Spider-Man and Batman and all of them. And now, granted, the Batman games weren't as good as the Spider-Man games back then because, you know, they really suck. But the Spider-Man games and the Marvel games, they were really, really fun to play. And like I said, it was good to see your characters not only in your favorite characters, not only in cartoons and things like that. You got to see them. You got to actually play as them. And the way they did it was really fun because... You know, you had the web shooters and things like that. You can do different attacks. And um, what are your thoughts on that, um, my Vernon kid? Uh, well, I, I figure you come to me first on Spidey. <laughs> um, for me, the first Spider-Man game I ever played was an arcade game, actually. Um, that was a four-player game, and it was a side-scroll beat-em-up game where you play with 
You either play with Spider Man, Black Cat, Namor, or Hawkeye. And that was a fun game. Then for the Genesis, they had a Spider Man game, or they would call it Spider Man versus the Kingpin. And in this game, it was really fun. You know, at the time, you know, you would fight many of Spidey's rogues gallery, you know, Lizard and Sandman and Hobgoblin, people like that. You, you, you had to take pictures of special things to get your web fluid back up. You know, it, it was cool back then. And then, of course, you know, Spidey laid low for a while after, you know, games like Spider-Man and the X-Men versus Arcade. But then it, it laid low for a while. And then all of a sudden, Maximum Carnage came out. And I think everybody loved Maximum Carnage, the video game. And I know some people to this day that still have not beaten that game. Hmm. Uh, but then, of course, yeah, when the, it left for a while and then Spidey came to the PS1, I thought that game was great. I thought the voiceover acting was good. The story was good. You know, uh, it felt like an old school Silver Age Spider-Man game. You know, Spidey, of course, you know, the usual. It, it, it kind of was usual, but it was also good. You know, Spidey being framed, you know, he, he got to clear his name. You know, he gets involved with Venom, you know. I thought it was always cool, you know, there was like one scene in the game where Spidey is on the Statue of Liberty and talking to one of his best friends, of course, Johnny uh, Johnny Storm, that's where they always meet on the Statue of Liberty, and Venom had taken Mary Jane, and he's talking about, you know, talking to Johnny, he's like, that's my story, Johnny, and he's like, you'll have faith, have faith, Spidey, you'll find Venom, and he's like, how? Venom's immune to my spider sense, I can't find him, and... You know, but it was always cool. Just the whole concept of that game was great. And then they made another one for the PS1, you know, uh, which the main character was Electro, you know. Okay. Uh, what were some of your favorite uh, comic book related games, uh, Tyler? Me, for me, it was uh, for classics, of course, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Uh, no one can disrespect Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Uh, uh, Maximum Carnage, and I'm one of those people, Chris, that has not been able to beat Maximum Carnage. <laughs> uh, what else was there? Uh, there was another game. Uh, I, I, I think it was Spider-Man Revenge of the Sinister Six, and of course the PS1 Spider-Man. PS2, I never got to play Spider-Man 2, uh, the sequel. I've never been able to play it. And now we're going to talk about video games starting to get expensive. We're talking about the PS2 and the Xbox and the, I believe it was the GameCube era. And, um, you know, video games started to get really, really expensive. And um, you want to start off with this, my Vernon kid? You have some good points. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, but besides, like what Zip was saying, guys, those three systems really took off because at the time it would have been four like i said uh the the sega dreamcast would have still been there um but unfortunately a lot of things started to plague sega in trying to keep up with those i mean they pretty much they were like the first in a way to start trying to put the online gaming on but the one thing I found out about Dreamcast is, like, a lot of these very... It was easy to burn a Dreamcast game. And when I mean burn it, burn it to the, the whole core, to the fact that you could have everything you wanted in the, the regular disc and have it in this. And it kind of hurt Sega. And that was kind of the reason why Sega, in a way, became more of a... Left the first-party company and went to a third-party company. What that means, guys, is that Sega basically makes games for all the systems now, like Capcom and things like that, instead of keeping their games exclusive to their systems. But once, you know, Sony got really big and then Microsoft jumps into the video gaming world with, you know, with the Xbox and, you know... They destroy everybody. Yeah, which was a huge... I mean, the Xbox, I remember... Not just that, the Xbox was very heavy. That was a heavy system. I will never forget oh, yeah. how heavy that system was. And you could actually crack somebody in the head and probably give them a concussion <laughs> with that. that it system. was like a mini computer. Yeah. 
and and then of course GameCube's Nintendo got back into it after the 64 kind of you know kind of uh, I wouldn't say let us down, but it just couldn't keep up. You know, they got t- you know it, the 64 kept with the cartridges, and it was mm-hmm. almost to the point where we as the gamers were saying Nintendo catch up now. The cartridges are done now. Let's go go to the disc. So with the GameCube comes out, what do we see? A smaller lunchbox, because that's pretty much what the GameCube was. <laughs> it's a lunchbox um, with smaller uh, GD ROM disc. Uh, but you know the problem I had with the, the the GameCube was yeah, you had to be very careful with their disc because they to the point you could break those just by putting your full strength into them <laughs> if you wanted to, but. It, it helped Nintendo. It really did. And, you know, Nintendo was back in that era now. They, they caught up. And as for, yeah, the, the systems got really expensive. You know, more than 300 to $400, you know. The, mm-hmm. the games got expensive, you know. And to the point where, you know, as we're younger, you know, most of at the time, we were getting our stuff from our parents at the time. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, you know, and, and our parents were looking at it like, you know, uh, $400, you know, you know, this, <laughs> oh, my God, you, you got to wait till Christmas for that, you know. And mostly every Christmas, I was loving it because I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to get, get the new system, you know. And it took me most time forever to get a new game most of the time. But, you know, I was always rewarded, you know, for good things I've done to get you know a new game you know not like now where i'm i'm actually fitted enough to get my own stuff myself but you know the games did get expensive you know you 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 can't deny that and then you know of course you know they really started to get more expensive when they started coming out with these special editions and things like that you know Mm -hmm. uh, and i'll I'll let t handle that part you know more go into more of that oh my god special editions if there was anything more insipid or either a gold mine, it would be special edition games. Because usually, whenever I bought a special edition game, it was either like, ooh, extra content on, you know, how they made the game, or ooh, uh, this had added features. But now with new spe- special features like for Xbox 360 and, you know, PS3, we now have downloadable content, which is a hell of a lot better than what we had back with uh, uh, the Xbox and PS2 special editions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was also it also yeah. came to the point, guys, where these special editions, not just the downloadable content, it was like, like, you know, I think we we all people you've heard us say we're not big fans of Halo, and I know there's gonna be some Halo marks out there. Oh, the YouTubers three hate Halo. Um, do we have our reasons, guys? Okay, but Halo was a big mark because look, there was a special edition that actually came with one of the. I think Master Chief's helmet. It was like, man, like the legendary edition. It was like, like six hundred dollars. I'm like, Jesus Christ! Like, I was like, you really gonna spend that much on just a game where, you know, an edition like that? So yeah, it really got really ridiculous at some point. Now I'm not gonna lie, guys, because I do have, I did buy <laughs> the special edition of Mortal Kombat game. So you know, but it came with something cool because I, it, it had a bookshelf that. Uh, it has Scorpion and Sub Zero on it, so you know it, it's kind of cool. But you know these special editions kind of like plague you sometimes. You know sometimes you don't. It's like why do we really need them at some point? But then there's some reason why. You know you want to see how the game, like T said, like how the game was made. You know see the voice, the actors, and do the voiceover work and things like that. Yeah. But in the beginning, yeah, like it, it was to the point like. We said about Xbox and PS2, yeah. These special editions was just like, wh- okay, why didn't you just put this content in the game first place instead of coming out with a special edition? You know, that's just the way it is. Yeah, for me, that era, for me, you know, I, I didn't get an Xbox because I had already had the PS2. And GameCube, um, I had played a lot over my friend's house because he was a really big uh, Nintendo nut. And, um, you know, I just went over his house and played it. But for me, this is just my opinion. I think the PS2 was just, the, you know, the king during that era because they had so many great exclusives. You know, you know, Xbox, when it came out, Microsoft really 
didn't know what they were doing. You know, they, they had, you, you can probably say better graphics and a bigger machine, yeah, but they really didn't know what they were doing when they first came out. Yeah, you know, Halo was really fat. their only saving grace. And then, you know, Nintendo was doing pretty good as well. But like I said, the PS2 had a lot of variety of games. Until this day, I will play those games. I mean, they had stuff like, um, because, you know, a lot of games from over the seas, you know, from Japan, they had, they were producing so many games like Final Fantasy and things of that nature. And, you know, I remember when Dynasty Warriors came out and stuff like that. They had the, you know, they had, that's where it was. That's where all the fun was at, in my opinion. So PS2 for that era was just kicking ass. And the games were expensive, but they would eventually go down to the point where you can buy them and things like that. And, Sometimes when I, you know, when I had a job, I I would actually buy some imports because I couldn't wait till America got it. Because when America got it, just like with anime, they would tone it down. You know, I didn't like the voiceovers, and sometimes it was just come off really bad. So I would import the games from PlayAsia.com and things of that nature. Oh, you do? Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, go ahead, Chris. Uh, yeah, I I used to have a lot of imported games myself. Um, for example, for the PS One, actually, I got a couple of the old Dragon Ball Z games that never came out in America, and they until later on, like six, eight years later, like there was a Dragon Ball Z game where it was called. Dragon Ball Z Legends, and it pretty much was an open world battle game where you could have six characters on the screen at once, and they all would fight, and it was like a gauge at the bottom, and whichever gauge got up first, that character would do uh, their special technique or so. Um, it, the graphics, you know, they were really small, but you could tell who it was. And then, of course, there was a game called uh, Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle 22 that, you know, later it came out in America, but yeah, I got it for import where you had to put in this disc, this first disc first where it could read, so the American system could read the game, uh, read it as an American game first, and then you'd put the disc in. So yeah, I, I got into the imports myself. Uh, the same thing happened with the game that I love, Shenmue, you know, Shenmue 2 didn't come out yet, but it came out for the Dreamcast in Japan, so I, I actually <laughs> found the, uh, the import, and I was like, you know what, I want to play it now, so I, I, and I got it, and, you know, I, I loved it, you know, so the, the imports did help, you know, until later on, then they finally came out, but yeah, you know, it, it's the same thing with, like, manga and anime, you, you want to watch it now before it, it gets dubbed, and sometimes toned down and things like that. Okay. You, you got any thoughts on that, um, Tyler? Uh, I actually did have, Chris, uh, Ultimate Battle 22. I actually had that at one point, uh, the yeah. imported. But I think we're forgetting one game on the PS2 that really, you know, changed up for Japanese, for, um, you know, um, I wouldn't say Japanese, but for the PS2 that it became, you know, a, uh, a gaming, a game that you know would people think, oh, PS2 Kingdom Hearts. For me, oh, yeah. I was, I'm oh, yeah. a big fan of Kingdom Hearts, both both ones, and I'm wondering, uh, when's Kingdom Hearts? It's been like what six years, six, seven, eight years since Kingdom Hearts two. Yeah, mm, it has. And also, yeah. I I can't, I I know somebody's probably saying this. How come they're not talking about this? PS2 wise, I think, one another game that really pushed. She just showed how truly powerful the PS2 was. God of War. Oh yeah. yeah. Those game, those really showed off how powerful the the PS2 was system wise. Metal Gears, the next couple of Metal Gears that came out for the PS2, uh, Part Two, Part Three. You know, they really pushed the 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 PlayStation 2 to its limit. And it really showed you how powerful this system was, even though, you know, you, you can kind of say the you know, Xbox was a little bit more, you know, graphic-wise, it was more powerful. But still, there were a lot of games that pushed the PS2 to the limit and showed you, yeah, it's, it's, it's a powerful system as well. 
And of yeah. course, you know, it later got uh, because the PS2 was big too. That was a pretty big system. And then later on, it got flatter and smaller. Because uh, actually, for me guys, my my PS2, the old one I had, actually it, it burnt out on me. So I had to get the the, the, the flatter one, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, the yeah, flat slim. One. Yeah, slim version. Yeah. Slim version. So, you know, to me, I, I to the point where I'm not saying I'm clumsy, guys, but to me, it's like, you know, I'm scared that I'm I'm gonna break this system because it's so slim and small, you know. But you know, the 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 bigger system, like I said, it burnt out on me, guys. It, I, I just couldn't take it anymore. Uh, I played that system to the end, and you know, uh, it was fun. You know, I actually sold it to <laughs> GameStop, and they took it, and they was like, "We'll try to fix it." I'm like. And they they gave me a, the slim. I'm like, okay, thanks, you know. But you know, it was it was a great time to have a PS2. Um, it yeah. still is. It still is. If you have a PS2, even though there are the Xbox, the PS3 is PS2 and PS1 compatible. I think it's the larger system, larger uh, one that's more compatible. Yeah, it's but it's nothing like still having the system to play that game on. In my opinion, you know, that's just me. Yeah, and I also think that era was also the death of um, Sega because the drink, I mean, they had the Sega CD. I remember, I don't know if you guys remember that. Yeah, Sega CD. Yeah, Sega yeah. CD, and then, you know, yeah. the Dreamcast, but you know, like you said, the Dreamcast didn't really take off, and Sega was really struggling. From that point on, they were just really doing um, just games, you know, they were making games, you know, Sonic big money maker and I think they had tried to come out with another system I forgot what it was called but um, they decided not to come out with it yeah Sega Sega must finish as far as systems go you know like what Zip was saying guys like I can tell you right now all, like I said at a long time I was a huge Sega fan and I can give you all the systems that Sega has pretty much came out with from the, the, the Sega Master System the Genesis or the Mega Drive wherever you are in the world uh, the Sega Saturn, the Sega CD, Sega 3DO, uh, the Nomad, the Game Gear, that was their held, handheld system, uh, to then later on, the, the Dreamcast came out and that was- Now we're going to start getting into the modern era of video games. You know, we talked about, you know, how video games have evolved up to the point of the what I like to call the PS2 era. Uh, and now we're going to get into, like I say, the modern age. And with the modern age of gaming, again, you know, when they first came out with the PS3 and the uh, Xbox 360 and Nintendo Wii, the gaming systems were really expensive. I remember, I think the PS3 was like, what, 900 if I'm not mistaken? Something around there. It was oh, lower, maybe about five, four ninety nine. dollars Six nine nine one of them I know is, and it also depended on now to the point where we get their different, uh, you know they each came with a bigger hard drive, you know bigger, you know you had your twenty gig or your 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 eighty gig, you know something like that now, you know so yeah they they got more expensive in terms of that. Yeah, and also you know, you know with the last era you could also start playing movies on your systems and. That's where the system started to become more like computers, in my opinion. You know, they for a while there they were starting to forget about the gaming because now you know we got Blu-ray and all that stuff, and you know you can watch your movies on your PS3 or what what have you. But the thing I like about Nintendo is they 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 really didn't do that. You know, Nintendo just stuck to the game. You know, while you know act well, Sony and um, Microsoft they were concerned about. Yeah, let, let's put all the stuff on here, you know, the gaming and the movies. And like I said, it was really expensive because I wasn't able to get a new system until like two years after they had announced it because it was too too much money. And the games they came out with, you know, the um, launch titles, they were just god awful, in my opinion. I'm like, I, I don't, I'm just going to wait. I had to, for a while, I still had my PS2, PS2 and I was playing with that and... Eventually, I caved in and got a 360. But 
Um, what are you guys' thoughts on the modern age of gaming? Um, I'm going to start with you this time, T. Modern age of gaming started out bad, but then it's, you know, progressed. Uh, there's some new modern age games that I, I love now. Uh, Darksiders. Uh, saw the sequel, Darksiders 2, looked awesome. Uh, I mean, jacked up, uh, jacked up Skeletor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what else was there I wanted to, I wanted to get? Uh, of course, I'm a fan of the Soul Calibur series, always been. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm probably one of those last few people who play Soul Calibur. Oh, you're not alone. I love it too. Alone. I love. You're not alone. Um, yeah, I I would say that when when we first got the 360 and the PS3, um, the game the starting out games were just bad. I mean, I remember I was like Mario uh, Mario Mario Game Party. I think it was Mario Party or something like that that came out for PS3 first. Yeah, I think it, yeah yeah something like that. Yeah. It was just not fun, but then as they like all systems, you know, the games that came out for it progressed and got better. And now we have games like, uh, you know, Mad World. I mean, yeah, Mad World or you know, Batman Arkham Arkham Asylum, Ar- soon to be Arkham City. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I think that it also, it, like I said at the beginning of this of this of this uh, of this video. The story, the games have evolved, but the story hasn't. And let me talk, so, uh, let me explain that. Every story has been told over at least fifty times. It's how you tell the story of a game that matters, in my opinion. And you know, we've seen like let's take for instance Darksiders. Darksiders has this has you can basically I'll show you uh, a Spawn comic. You know the end game story. Let's take let's take the end game story arc, and so that's that's where Darksiders got the ideas from. Um, mm. Same thing for Mortal Kombat. You could look at Street. I'll show you Street Fighter, or I'll you take a look at uh, Duke Nukem. I'll show you Doom. But I think Doom came before Duke Nukem, or was that the other way around? Uh, I think they're around the same time, if I'm not I mistaken. Around, uh, Doom came out first. Yeah, Doom came out first. And then yeah, you look at Duke Nukem. I'll show you Doom. Only funnier. Uh, still can't wait to play Duke Nukem forever, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, that's why I think you know the the game the games are different, but the stories are still there. I mean, like for shooters, it's like one faction against another. You gotta kill the other guy. Story arc, um, story story modes is like uh, big cataclysm. You're you're the hero or villain or whatever. And you know, it's all stories that have been told before, but it's how you tell the story and how you keep the people interested for the most part. Yeah. And games have gotten way, way, uh, a lot more mature nowadays. I mean, we're talking, I mean, every game that comes out, Ninja Gaiden, um, Devil May Cry, to Mortal Kombat, to... Gears of War. Gears of War, you name it. I mean, that's another thing we could touch on kind of briefly is that, you know, there, there really aren't a lot of games for kids nowadays because everything is just really M-rated. And, yeah, you and know, e-games e- e- suck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me personally, I don't mind that, but you know, back then they had a really big, a good balance of games. You know, it feels like now they're aiming towards the more adult crowd, which, like I said, I don't mind, but you know, there's not really a balance there. I don't see any games that's really coming out for kids uh, besides the Sonic games. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I haven't played Sonic in forever because I'm when they when they came up with Shadow, I'm like, I'm done. Forget that. You know, you gotta. A hedgehog that can run super fast, and he's supposed to be the ultimate life form. And then you got him on a motorcycle. I'm like, get out of here with that. And you know, person and shooting people. And it's mm-hmm. an e, it's an e game. How did they? How did that not get to be a T rating? Is my question. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it, back in the days, it was the the rating system really kind of helped because you had the K A that was for kids and T like teenager and thirteen up, and then of course you had your M. M.A. At first, it was called M.A. You know, that was the more mature games. But, yeah, like like you said, you know, the the games now, if you want the real good stuff, yeah, it's the M-rated games that, yeah. and, you know, but besides that, it's always these games that, you know, you, you find are, you know, movie-based games like Cars and Incredibles and yeah, yeah. games like that. 
mainly for kids. And there's no effort to them, and there's no effort to those games. That's the problem, because they're not taken seriously. Especially with the comic book-related movie games. I mean, let's face it. I mean, yeah, I appreciate the effort of doing that, but it doesn't work out. You know, it's best to just do a game on its own, and that's where... You know, Spider-Man, you know, games like Shadow Dimensions and Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City really work because they're not based on the movies. They're just doing their own story. That's you know, why those... I, I, I have to kind of contradict a little bit on that one, and I don't mean to, but, you know, I will agree, yeah, the comic, movie-based comic book games kind of do suck. I'm not going to lie. But I, I got to admit, Spider-Man 2, the video game was pretty decent. I really enjoyed yeah, that. No one, one can deny yeah, that, that. That was a pretty good one. That's the yeah. only exception. Uh, that one, uh, I did enjoy Wolverine Origin, uh, the video game, because that really made it like, why couldn't the movie been like this? You yeah, know, true. That, mm-hmm. that, that really was an exception. Uh, Spider-Man 3 was okay, um, but now when you I'm look at it, I'm, I'm, some might say, hey, what, what about Iron Man? That was the movie... Uh, you uh, you can say it, but I'm not gonna say it. Uh, the yeah. Incredible Hulk uh, movie um, game that came out was pretty much uh, ultimate destruction all over again. So I, I didn't mind that. Um, if you haven't played Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction, play it. It's where have you game. been? <laughs> yeah, where yeah. have you been? It's a good game. Uh, oh yeah. But when you look at these games now that are more based, you know, Thor. And I'm, I'm like, you know, I can't really play that. Unless they're doing a real story about it outside of the movies, I'm not going to. I looked at this Captain America game, and I'm like, yeah, the movement looks great, but it looks like an old school game that I'm looking at. I'm like, the graphics suck. I, I can't, yeah. I'm not looking at that. Oh, but, and I pl- managed to play the Thor movie game. Okay. Mm-hmm. That was an abomination. Hmm. I'm not going to lie. The, the game control sucked. The, the voice acting was off. The lip syncing was off, at least. The game controls were crap. The the boss fights were kind of useless. It was like a T-rated God of War, basically. <laughs> so, like you said, you know, when when it came when it's, when it's about a, a video game character, but they're not taking it from the, from movies. You know, we talked about Spider Man and Batman, uh, uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. You know, games like that. This, yeah. this new yeah. game that's coming out uh, for the X-Men, you know, called X-Men Destiny, has nothing to do with the movies. It's just an, a, a, a game that's being uh, developed. You know, of course, the uh, X-Men Le- Legends games were good. You know, you know uh, let's see what else I could throw. They had a Justice League game out that it wasn't based on the, the cartoon and everything. Um, it, it had, like, a feel of Ultimate Alliance game, you know, but... When you get to all these other games that are based on movies, you know, Superman Returns, you know, and things like that. I mean, I admit it. I had the Superman Returns game for the Xbox 360. It was free. I got it free. So, and so I did, did I. Like, uh... And I did like when he goes supersonic speed because you actually see him kind of breaking the sound barrier and, you know, and things like that. But the game was just pretty god off. I hate when they take these comic book movie based game and they try to add villains that are not in the movie you know because like, it makes you want to have these guys in the movie yeah, yeah it's like but, why didn't you put them in the movie you know Damn like it. for example the superman returns game you fought you fought uh you fought mongo and i'm like you fought okay, bizarro so, uh, it's like okay so why why was he in the movie in this captain america game i i i think i saw crossbones in there i'm like okay so how is crossbones in it if this is supposed to be a world war ii era game Things like that. I, uh, you know, I saw Baron von Strucker in there, and like I said, the movement of the game looks pretty cool. You know, from the the fighting techniques and things like that that Cap can do. You know, he can actually grab people and use and throw his shield at them. And I'm like, yeah, that's good. But I'm looking at the graph. I'm like, man, this this PS1 graphics or what? It it just looks it looks ugly. You know. But like I said, uh, Spider-Man 2, yes, is an exception. Uh, Spider-Man 1 was abomination because you couldn't go down below. If you fell, <laughs> you know, you're dead. You had to stay above uh, above the, the skyscrapers. I'm like, what? Well, you could argue you could argue that Sp- the original 1990 Spider-Man PS1 game did the same thing. True, true. You're, you're right. Mm-hmm. 
And yep. but like like I said, Wolverine Origin mo- movie game was good. That was good because it was like okay, you know they were showing blood, they were showing guts. He was he he was actually you know acting more like Wolverine, you know, with the foul mouth and stuff. And you're like okay, now this is kind of how the movie should have been. You know, I love the 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 like the interactive like quick timing events like Wolverine would jump across something and he like would jump into a chopper and stuff. I thought it was cool and you know, but now when you look at these these games where they're, they're being smarter now about it. You know, they're like, "Okay, if we're going to do a comic book character, okay, we're not going to base it on movies. We're going to do our own thing. Spider-Man, you know, all those Spider-Man games that have came out the past have been good. You know, Arkham's art Arkham Asylum put Batman games back on the map. Let's put it like that. Yeah, the past yeah. Batman well, games, DC games in general, DC yeah. games in general. Yeah. yeah, you know, but look at look at now. You know, we we finally get a Green Lantern game, but it's based on the movie. Yeah, exactly. It's based exactly. on the movie, you know, it's called Rise of the Manhunters, but still, it's I guarantee you, it's going to have tidbits of the movie. You know, mm-hmm. and, and probably have like I don't know, I don't know, maybe. We're gonna have someone like uh, a couple other movie, I mean, comic book villains in there. Like uh, we might have the shark or uh, who? I keep forgetting. Because like, I, because I, I, for me, I was I was hoping they were gonna put the Manhunters in the second movie, but you know, it's in the game. And yeah. getting on genres for me, I really don't have a favorite genre. I, although I do tend to lean towards fighting games because like. Like Chris said, video games could be great stress relievers. And for me, you know, games like Mortal Kombat and stuff like that and the bloody games really do help me. Because I'm like, okay, I can really smash somebody's head in. Because coming home from work, you really do feel like doing that sometimes. Really? It's fighting games for you guys? Yeah, fighting games and action games. It's it's Grand Theft Auto for me when I feel pissed. (laughs) Yeah, see, we didn't even mention GTA, but yeah. Uh, GTA has come a long way as well. I mean, look look at four. Look how spectacular four looked. You know, um, just the way the characters move now, and the more interactive they got. But with with the genre games, to me, I was when I was saying guys was the fact that with me the genres. We heard Zip talk about the genres he liked. With me, I'm kind of open to anything. You know, but you guys hear me talk about fighting games a lot. I I grew up. Like a lot of fighting games, a lot of action adventure games, uh, like first person shooters. You know, shooters are another way of stress reliever, getting to pick somebody off in the head and things like that. Uh, don't get me started with Destiny. She loves that stuff. Uh, um, and of course, you, you know, you know, I'm. I, some people might say, you know, why play sports games? Because you could just go out and play the sport yourself. But. I do like the sports game too. I like the simulation games as well. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, I like the basketball simulations. I like the baseball. I like, I, I have a problem with football because I, you guys know how I feel about Madden, so don't even get me started on that. Um, and uh, I, I do like the games where you actually have like the, I like fishing games actually, where they actually have the rods and stuff, and you get to catch the fishes. I used to love those games like. Uh, that Dreamcast had. They had like a bass fishing. That was it. And I used to love playing that game. Um, and there's another game called uh, Capella Deadliest Hunt where you, you actually – now, I don't condone hunting for sport, guys. I don't. But if it's not hurting an animal, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for like the hunting games, you know, because I know I'm not doing that for real. But I, I like stuff like that, very interactive things. Um you know, and of course now you got the the, the Wii Connect. I mean, not the Wii, the Connect, Xbox Connect, and everything now, where you you physically get involved in the games now. You know, and but I'm I'm open to a lot of genres. I'm I'm not just one typical genre. You know, I. What about you, T? Uh, fighting games first and foremost. Uh, free roam. I love free roam games. Uh, able to do anything you want. Uh, any weapons. Of course, I'm a fan of Rockstar. Huge fan of Rockstar games. Uh, thoroughly enjoy those. I, like, when you guys say beat-em-up games as uh, also uh, 
for me, whenever I come home pissed and play GTA 4, it is a night. It's like I massacre the entire city <laughs> in in, <laughs> in, Vice, in whatever city in Rockstar. I, I swear, dude, I, I take a car, drive on the sidewalk, start hitting everybody, uh, Aim at the um, point the gu- use the character to point the gun at the other side of the street and start wailing away on them. Yeah, we're not yeah. condoning this, people. Okay, we're not condoning this, but it, it, it it's a stress reliever. It does help. <laughs> yeah, it does. Cause man, sometimes you really do need that. <laughs> but there's nothing better, like you said, with beat 'em up games. Like there's nothing better than just you know pounding the shit out of somebody. Uh, yeah. Especially when you when you have the real time damage, like you can see the handiwork you did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like for me, guys, in terms of the fighting games, I mean, you know, if 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 I'm playing, I do play online the fighting games, and most of the time I will have my mic on so I can if the other guy has a mic. And one time I actually was in a bad mood, and and I and this guy came, he's like, "Now go easy on me, guy. I'm I'm new to this," and I didn't hear anything what he said. I just I, I whooped him, and I was, and he's like, I told you, go easy, and, you know, I was, sorry, I, I'm, in, I'm in a bad, I'm in a bad mood right now, and, but, you know, things like that, so, you know, you, you gotta sometimes know where to draw the boundary, because there was one time I actually played a, a little kid on, online, and when, it, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and, you know, and I didn't know he was a little kid, I didn't know he was like 13, 12 years old, and, I made the boy cry, and I'm like, oh, my God, I, I made this kid cry. Uh, and I could hear him crying, and I'm like, as I, I wrote, I called them back, and I was like, I didn't mean to make you cry, you know, I, you know stuff like that. So you got to you gotta also know, guys, where to, <laughs> when you're online playing these fighting games, like, okay, because sometimes you never know. And for me, I, I'm not for one to make little kids cry, and I made this little boy cry. And I felt kind of bad about it, so I, I actually, you know, uh, friend requested him, and I said, you know, you know, let's let's be friends. You know, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I didn't mean to make you cry. And I started giving him pointers how to beat people and stuff in the in the game, you know. And but I was telling him stop picking. Like for me, you know, he kept picking people like the Sentinel, and I'm like, I hate people who pick the damn Sentinel because I know what they're gonna do. So anybody who picks a Sentinel, I know what you're gonna do, and I will hurt you if you play with the Sentinel. And I, and all the Sentinel does is bring out the little Sentinels and things like that. And I told him, don't do that. And I, and he did it. And so I told him, like, if you're gonna use other characters, I try to give him pointers to how to use other characters. But with me, online guys, I'm I'm really friendly. I'm I'm not that crazy guy. Like, but if I'm in a bad mood, yeah, watch out. Uh, that's when the other side of me comes out. Uh, you guys know his name. He comes out on the, when I'm online. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's good to not take these games too seriously because sometimes you know like, you know it can get out of hand. And I've heard stories of people getting into fights and stuff over video games, and, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it gets really crazy. And with that being said. What do you guys see the future game going? Like I said, with the passing of E3 this following week, you know, they announced the Wii U. And it seems like every, I want to say every five years now, they're coming out with a new system. And for me, I've always said, they should just come together. And I know this will never happen because, you know, they're, 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 such, they're in such competition with each other. But they should just come together and make one system. Because I get sick of playing games and i'm like man this game has content that i can't play because it's on the other system you know like mortal Kombat. you know the recent game it had kratos but only for the ps2 and you know stuff like that is really nerve-wracking i i really get sick of stuff exclusive yeah exclusive exclusive. uh exclusive material so what do you guys think about that you know the future of gaming and exclusive material um i'll start off with you this time tyler i i got seriously nothing i'm burnt out <laughs> all right chris um the future of gaming to, uh, you know what to me <laughs> i i'm kind of like tony stark i'm a future <laughs> i have a feeling gaming is just gonna get more interactive than ever to the point where almost to the point you're actually in the game you know <laughs> 
uh, with the character or you're controlling that character, kind of like reboot or something like that to the mm-hmm. point okay, that you're in it. If you ever seen the movie Gamer um, with, uh, with Gerard Butler and things like that, that's how I see gaming now, where not that you're controlling somebody, but your your movements really are virtual more, reality, basically. Yeah, basically more virtual reality to the point, uh, kind of like we saw in Batman Beyond and things like that. How the arcade games got really involved, like you know they were putting on like goggles and things like that. They you can almost feel the damage in some way, a little bit. But, but I, I I wouldn't want to feel that kind of that nonsense. But oh, could yeah. you imagine Mortal Kombat in that kind of style? Yeah, and I, I did not want to feel like somebody ripping my arm off or something like that. But I think it will get to the point where they will get more interactive. But I, I, I don't like the exclusive stuff either. You know, I think that if there's a Metal Gear game, let it come out for all the system. Even though, yeah, it came out for the Sony first. You know, actually came out for Nintendo first. You know. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't have it exclusive but i understand why some of these stuff i mean we'll never see a mario game on you know on sony or you know or mario on on xbox you know those exclusive characters but but when you got these fighting games like mortal kombat don't have exclusive characters like kratos i mean it was good to see him in a game but it was like if you got an xbox if you're an xbox owner like me it was like Hey, that's a slap in the face, man. Hey, come on. But then to the point now, it's almost to the point, like, why the exclusive? Because odds of one, these guys are going to come out on the next system. Anyway. We're like, remember Soul Calibur 4? We got Yoda in, Yoda in the Xbox version, Darth Vader in the PlayStation 3 version. But I later still feel on, like I was cheated. And, but then later on, yeah. they both came out anyway. So it was like, what's the point? So that's my final word on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, this this video was really fun to make, and um, we're going to end it here. But as for me, the future of gaming, I really don't know where. And like I said, I got to agree with Chris. I think games are definitely going to be, you know, getting more like virtual reality. And uh, we could see some stuff like in Batman Beyond, people getting addicted to it because... <laughs> I've heard stories of people just not even leaving their house right now because go, go look at the people who play StarCraft in South Korea. It's scary. Yeah, it, it's you know stuff like that's really, really, um, it's really out there. But uh, we're gonna leave this video off, and uh, it was fun being with my fellow brothers at arms. Um, you guys can uh, say goodbye, and we're gonna leave it off. All right. One more thing, guys. Uh, if you're a Halo fan, like a Halo fan, we mean no disrespect to you. So, but that's just my final word. Yeah, we are. We're, I mean, I always respect people's opinions. You know, I, I actually like the Halo storyline, the comics that Marvel came out with. You know, I just the games. I just think they don't do it for me. You know, that's my final words. Final Anything words else? for me, guys, is just I uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, once again. Having the YouTubers three year together again. Uh, I know a lot of you have been waiting for this. I read the comments, people. I read my friends' comments on their channels, and I seen a lot of people is looking forward to this. Uh, we we can't promise we'll do this a lot or often, but I I give you my word we'll try to do it as much as we can. That's mm-hmm. all I could say about that. Okay. With that being said, bloody days, gory nights. We are out. Peace. Later, guys. Later.